what would have been the 94th birthday of American civil rights leader Cesar Chavez, local advocates and community members are taking the day now to reflect on the times they stood side by side with him as he fought for the rights and benefits of farm workers right here on the Central Coast. And this year, his efforts rings true more than ever as local farm workers worked throughout this pandemic to keep people across the country fed. KION's Jocelyn Ortega was out at the Old Monterey County Jail in Salinas, where Chavez was once jailed. To tell more about his legacy, she joins us now. Local leaders say when Chavez was jailed here, that's when people came together to make sure he was freed. They say that and other things is what inspired future generations of farm workers and their families to continue fighting for a better life. This March 31st is a day that Sabino Lopez Figueroa takes the time to reflect on the times he stood by the side of Cesar Chavez. When ITCC started working in the fields, I recall, you know, we were making $1.05 per hour and working at 12 to 14 hours per day, seven days a week. So many challenges we faced in those years. Sabino was only 17 and in the fields of Salinas when he began hearing about a man who was gaining local and national attention as he used his voice to demand better pay and better conditions for struggling farm workers. His name is Cesar Chavez, man. When I hear that name, say, bring in this guy because I want this guy to come in because we want to join the movement. Chavez went on to lead some of the most memorable demonstrations and marches in history, including in cities like Salinas and Watsonville. This building on Alisal Street in Salinas is the very place where Chavez was jailed back in December of 1970, the one time in his life following his movements. Ethel Kennedy, uh, the widow of Robert Kennedy and Coretta Scott King, the widow of Martin Luther King, came to Salinas to advocate for his release. Supervisor Alejo says his own grandfather worked with Chavez during the movements, adding the legacy of their work still carries on today. New opportunities to open doors uh, for the children of farm workers and grandchildren of farm workers to be able to now be professionals, to be the first in their families to go to college and be leaders in their community. I'm a certainly a testament to that dream. Alejo says another part of Chavez's legacy is that people in the local agriculture industry and farm worker labor unions are now able to participate and collaborate in county meetings to have their voices heard when it comes to things like funding and other political decisions. A member of United Farm Workers here on the Central Coast and throughout the state says this year has served as a reminder of the importance of farm workers, but says there is still more work to be done, starting with making sure they are safe and survive the ongoing pandemic. You know, we're vulnerable to COVID and we're exposed to COVID at a higher rate. I think 574,000 have been exposed. Dr. Jill Biden is with us and is joining us to see the, the resources and that, that legacy that Cesar Chavez left um, of, of providing resources such as vaccines. Supervisor Alejo says they are looking into requesting state funding eventually to restore and preserve this building as a symbol of local history. In Salinas, Jocelyn Ortega, KIO News Channel 546.